Hi everyone, welcome to The Colour Cave. My name is Gem and I like to play with art stuff. It is Sunday and it is raining. That means that harvest has stopped and I have time for another sketchy Sunday. Now I don't want these videos to get all samey, but after my last sketchy Sunday where I drew a wine glass, which was my first attempt on black paper, I will put a link in the card if you want to go and have a look at that first. Um, it kind of piqued my interest a little bit and I have so many white art supplies. I was really keen to go on and try something else that was perhaps a little bit more detailed, a little bit more complicated. So after doing a bit of extensive research on Yieldy YouTube, I found that apparently one of the first things that everyone draws when they're trying white on black is the moon. So not to be left out of what all the cool kids are doing, I thought I'd better give it a shot. So I'll uh, just switch to top down view and you can come and see what I'm up to and we can get going. Before I jumped into the drawing, I wanted to test out all these wonderful white supplies I had. So that was a white soft pastel, some white gouache, a white gel pen, and then we're into pencils. I had a Prismacolor, I had an Albrecht Dürer watercolor pencil, a uh, pastel pencil, that was the one that I used in the last video, and the Faber-Castell Polychromos white as well, and a little water brush just for the watercolour pencil. So here basically I'm just testing out all the supplies in the black paper just to see how they react, and most importantly the smudginess level. Uh, this was not only for actually deliberately smudging you know, within the picture, but also to see if it had an accident, you know, what sort of disaster it would cause. I did find with the gouache it was quite thick and if I was going to use it again, which I didn't in this particular picture, I would water it down a little bit because it was quite difficult to work with due to the consistency of it. But that's okay, I'm glad I found that out at this stage. The pastel pencil was quite familiar to me because I'd used it before so I was quite confident with that and uh, you know how, how I could use it in the picture to my advantage. The white gel pen was spectacular and it did have smudgy properties so I was quite determined that I fancied using that. When it came to the normal white pencils, as I said, I had the Prisma colour and also a Polychromos and I just found that the Prisma pencil was a lot more opaque and I sort of plumped for that over the, the Polychromos. I didn't see the point in having two pencils sat there when basically they both have the, the same sort of function. I was surprised at the watercolour pencil. Um, it came out a lot more vivid than I expected, but again, I think just because I'm at such an early stage in terms of drawing on black paper, I decided to give that a buy. So here I found a nice round object, which is a tin where I keep my washi tape, and that is llama washi tape. Awesome. So I thought that was a good uh, basis to draw around just with a normal HB pencil, nothing fancy there, just so that I had a nice round template to start with, and I knew that I could rub those lines out if they were going to be showing through at any point. So the short list of supplies that I ended up using were the soft pastel, the pastel pencil and the Prismacolor pencil for aforementioned reasons as well as the gel pen which I'm not going to lie I was quite excited about using. The idea behind using the soft pastel was I knew that I could cover quite a large area quite quickly and it had the best smudgy properties out of everything that I tried on that wee tester sheet. So basically I just got to work here and went to town because I knew that I was going to have to have some sort of basis and like a, a base layer of colour for my moon because it is mostly white. So quite quickly I realised with the tooth of the paper that I was going to have to blend it out and I didn't particularly want to use my finger because that is just inviting a whole load of mess. So I decided to use a blending stump to start sort of smooshing that chalk pastel into the paper and I was quite surprised at how much the the process of you know rubbing it with the the blender stump it started to fade out really quickly it didn't stay as vibrant as I thought it would and I learned quite early on as well that I was pressing too hard with the blending stump because you'll see later on I went to go back over it with chalk again but also with some of the other things that I had and I was struggling to get the paper to take any more because basically I'd flattened the tooth of the paper. So that was a lesson learned pretty early on but 
it was still reasonably um, fixable. I mean, I, I wouldn't call it a mistake at this stage. I would have just called it quite a sort of quick learning curve. So in this top right hand corner, this is where the light source is coming from. So I wanted as much white in that top right hand corner as possible where the light would be striking off the surface of the moon. So I spent quite a bit of time working in the different mediums to get a nice white bright area at that top side of the moon. Yeah, and here comes the first attempt with the white pencil. I wanted that for round the outside for the outline because I knew it would give me a nice sharp line. And you can see quickly that I changed over to the pastel pencil because I just found with pressing so hard with the blending stump earlier that it, the paper really wasn't taking any of the pencil at all. And I did get on a little bit better with the pastel pencil. I've got a little Tombow mono eraser there and that was just basically to carve out some of the craters in the moon and to give it a little bit of contrast in some of the areas and it's it's quite weird the, the reason that this type of picture is fun is because there's not really any rules you want it to be random you want it to you know you don't want any sort of pattern to it and i think that what that's what gives it the sort of fun element and also the easy element because really realistically you can't do anything wrong when you're doing something like this so i really enjoyed this part and i was just kind of like you know going on little tangents saying oh I'll just darken this bit down or let me add a little bit more pencil in here so that was really really good fun and it made the overall experience of drawing something like this just super enjoyable so i can kind of just jumping back and forth now and i'm trying to move around the the picture and you know jump between the, the the mediums that i've got and just work on little sections at a time but every now and then not that you can see in the video because obviously i have edited it and cut it down but i did stop every maybe 15 seconds or so and just look at what i had done and decide you know to, whether to move on so that i didn't overwork an area It was around this time that I realised that my lightest part of the moon wasn't light enough and drawing in general it's something that I'm very guilty of. I'm almost over cautious when I'm working with tones and values and when I have a finished picture quite often I regret not putting more pigment down on the paper and having sort of taken a step back from the the sketch at this point I realized that I did need more lay down on that light side of the moon so I was trying to go back in and add more detail and just add a bit more of the white to it to really make it pop because the last thing I wanted was a wishy-washy moon the you know the point of doing something on black paper is that it stands out and it's stark and I was trying really hard to keep that crisp line around the outside on that right hand side
Moving over more towards the middle and the bottom left of the moon, I had to really fight with myself here not to overdo it in the darker sections. Uh, obviously in stark contrast, no pun intended, from the top right hand side because I had to remember that that side was supposed to be in shadow. So although I did want a little bit of definition, and some details in that bottom corner. I had to be very careful that I didn't overdo it and overwork it because it, the, it wouldn't look like there was a light source shining from a particular area. So you can see I was, I was quite sort of uh, tentative. I kind of nipped back and forth between that sort of middle section and that bottom corner. And uh, I think it was just because I was frightened that I was going to make it too white. I kind of felt at this point that I had covered the the sort of basis of the that base layer, basis of the base layer, you guys know what I mean. Um, yeah, I, ju I just felt I had a good covering at this point and I started to really look at the detail more and see where I wanted to add in my little craters and, you know, the darker spots and the lighter spots and spend a bit more time on the, the finer points of the picture because I was quite happy that when I stood back it looked like a planet of some description, maybe not quite the moon at this point, but definitely a planet and I was quite happy with the way that that went and I was quite satisfied and surprised at how easy it was to do. I did use the pastel pencil the most when it came to doing the details and I think part of that is perhaps because I had used it before and I knew how to, you know, what to expect in terms of how it was going to behave for me and I have to say the use of the pastel pencil and the Prismacolor pencil was really really good for doing those details and knowing that if I did make a mistake or I decided that I didn't like something it would be something that would be quite easy for me to fix because I could just um, erase it. So I think in terms of developing a preference for working on black paper, I, I was really pleased with the choice that I made and I was glad that I'd swatched everything out beforehand, but I can see me using the pencils. There's a surprise, guys, as if you didn't know that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I found them really good and really versatile as well because with the pastel pencil, although you don't get the coverage of the, the soft pastel, you know, in terms of speed, it still gives the same sort of lay down, just in a much more refined and detailed manner. So that was really, really good. That's, that was awesome. Also, I highly recommend the use of one of these little Tombow erasers because it just helped that add in that little extra something without too much effort at all and just made the picture look, well, pretty awesome in my opinion. <laughs> Not that I'm blowing my own trumpet or anything. And this is where the fun started. I got to use my gel pen. This really was awesome. I was really pleased that the, first of all, that the pen took on top of all the chalk and everything that was down on the paper, but it just set the, you know, set the picture off wonderfully and just made those little details pop. 
and again it's something that I'll definitely be using again in the future. I did have to sort of stop every now and then and unclog the nib simply because the pastel was starting to kind of choke it up a little bit but I expect that and I'm used to that with using gel pen over the top of coloured pencils anyway so there was no great disasters I just made sure to clean it properly so that I wasn't going to damage it in the sort of longer term and uh, yeah that <laughs> I was really skeptical about doing this picture but and I had seen you know as I said the videos before and I thought yeah okay it was like oh no this is really easy but it wasn't the fact that it was easy it was just so much fun Although I was pleased with how my moon had turned out, I kind of felt it looked a little bit lonely sat there in the middle of the paper all on its own, so I decided to add in a nice starry background with my gel pen, just to sort of set it off and uh, add a little bit extra to the picture. When I was working my way around, although I had erased around about my moon, I did notice that there was still quite a few sort of smudgy marks, probably from the side of my hand, around the outside. And I was going to erase them, but I decided to leave them because I thought it kind of added to that sort of wispy galaxy type feel. Um, and it wasn't too much that it was going to, you know, sort of take your eye off the, the focus of the picture. But I just thought, yeah, do you know what? Artistic license. I'm just going to leave that right there. It's fine. Added a few sparkly, shiny stars as well, just again to really sort of frame my moon. And uh, yeah, that turned out really well as well. And there we go, done and dusted, happy gem. Hope you guys have enjoyed following through this video with me. If you do, please do the usual and give us a thumbs up, it's always appreciated. I had so much fun, I've said that like so many times, but I had so much fun doing this and I was pleasantly surprised, so all that was left for me to do is sign the bottom. Thanks again for watching and hopefully you will join us again soon in the Colour Cave. See you later guys, have a good day!